size optimization is the uh, general si optimization that you do uh, by changing the geometric parameters. But coming to the shape optimization, this is where you optimize the boundaries of a shape uh, so, uh, to meet your um, objectives and the constraints that you define for optimization. So this is already included in Flux. Uh, so to use shape optimization, uh, you need to have Optistruct and Compose to be installed before starting it. And you need to couple it by defining their um, path uh, where it is installed. And then under user mode, you need to go with advanced so that you have access to this optimization of uh, solver available for you to start. Uh, next, moving on to the process, uh, the workflow. So first, you need to uh, completely define your Flux project like the normal one that you do, uh, given it's a magnetostatic or the transient magnetic. And then comes defining your optimization completely, where you define your objectives, constraints. And then once you have that, you start your optimization. And once you start optimization, the shape, the, topo, the shape optimization, it will call Optistruct to, op, uh, to change the structure of the lines that you define um, or the boundaries. And then once it changes, it will call Flux to do your electromagnetic analysis and then get all the responses. And the other one is Optistruct. Since uh, this is a new feature we introduced where you can couple the mechanical, mechanical responses also into your optimization. So for that, it will call Optistruct again. And once you have all the quantities, it will communicate with the structural optimizer again. So this is a loop that is continued to do your optimization. And once you have your optimum um, design, uh, then it will come back. Then you'll get the optimized Flux project uh, open. And then you can see how the structure is changed. And along with that, you'll get all the results uh, as a .h3d files available in the folder where you're doing your optimization. So this is a complete workflow for your uh, magnetomechanical optimization that you do in Flux. Now moving on to the shape optimization. So here I took an example of synchronous reluctance machine to show the workflow. So to start with, uh, you can uh, see the optimization options uh, under your data tree once you define everything. And under advanced mode, under solve, where you'll be able to see uh, the tree for optimization. So you, you're going to use this to completely define your optimization. And for the example, I chose the objective to be minimizing the torque ripple to keep it simple, but you can have other objectives as well. And, the, and for the constraints, I have constraints for the average torque symmetry so that we have same shape on both the sides of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, like the barriers here. And then for the volume reduction, just to reduce the weight of your rotor, for example, here. And then the last one is your mechanical constraint to put the stress less than uh, 260 megapascals. So these will be used. So to start with, first, you'll define your responses that are needed to define your objective and constraints. Here, um, we'll start with defining our torque. So this is way to. Uh, Select the physical quantity to be torque, and you need to define your mechanical set. Similarly, for the torque ripple, just instead of torque, you'll define, you'll select torque ripple. And then the next one is to reduce the volume of the faces for your rotor. So that's what we did. So I selected the volume for the faces, and then I selected the face of the rotor here. And then the last one is to define your mechanical response, which is, and then for the choice, I chose uh, stress, but you can uh, choose compliance also, that is also available. And once you define your responses, the next one is uh, to define your constraints. So here, to start with, the first one I defined is the torque. So we wanted the torque to be more than 11.9 Newton meters. So I selected the function to be average response. And then I uh, selected the response that I created for torque. And then it's uh, boundary. Um, so the next one constraint is I selected the symmetry constraint and I gave it as a 45 degree symmetry. So um, 
45 degree one will be the boundary and then on the either side the shape will be maintained and the next one is for the mechanical um, I included the response and then I gave that it uh, the maximum stress that uh, we wanted to be limited to is 260 megapascals and then the other one is uh, for to constrain the volume of my of our rotor and then its limit here and so that is for the constraints the next comes the mechanical optimization so if you don't have the mechanical optimization you're not going to define this if you wanted to put it in the air here first we need to define what are the mechanical regions that need to be considered so here our flux barriers are air regions so i defined them as air region and i selected the faces for the flux barriers the second one is for the rotor where we wanted to uh, put the stress to be uh, less than the 260 megapascal so first I defined what is the material for the region and its mechanical properties here and then I selected the phase on which this material to be uh, this material properties to be implemented and then look at the stress so that's what is nothing but the rotor and after defining this we need to define the boundary conditions so here the first boundary condition I defined is on this line which is a line that is shared between our shaft and the rotor since these need the nodes that are on this line boundary should be static that does not have the freedom to move in any direction so that's why we considered that all of them are fixed here and selected the lines uh, that is sharing the shaft and the rotor the next one is for the periodic lines which are these boundaries here and this for this one this has the freedom of the nodes to move in the radial direction that is it it does not have the freedom to move in angular or normal so that's why I have fixed and then I kept free for the radial and I selected the lines so these are the two boundary conditions that are needed the last and final one is a mechanical problem under mechanical optimization so for the problem here I selected centrifugal load and I gave the maximum speed at which the rotor is rotating and the next one to define is a mechanical regions uh, for the, the I defined rotor and the flux barriers and then the mechanical boundaries that you defined here so once you have this uh, this completes the mechanical optimization definition also the last step for you to complete the optimization definition is to uh, uh, define the optimization problem. So here our objective is to minimize the torque ripple. So select I selected minimize and then for the response I selected torque ripple and coming to our constraints we have mean torque constraint mechanical constraint to put the stress in check next one is the symmetry and then reduce the volume of our rotor so those are the constraints so we selected it and then you need to define the mechanical problem also when we are doing a mechanical uh, optimization also into shape optimization and once you have the mechanical problem defined so you're good with defining all the optimization options so you you are now you can run the shape optimization so to do that you need to go into solving on the top of the flux project window and once you select uh, solving you'll see run free shape optimization and once selecting after selecting it you'll see a pop-up window so here you need to define on what lines you wanted to put shape optimization select your scenario directory in which you want to save all the results and then select your optimization problem that you defined here the next one is for the remeshing strategy we'll go with no because remeshing is not compatible for mechanical if you in include mechanical optimization also as of now uh, and once you but uh, if you're not using mechanical you can go with remeshing you can define the remeshing strategy in here uh, then the next one so uh, once you define this you're good you can run your shape optimization and once it completes your um, shape optimization under output window you'll see the result on number and what is the initial value it started with and what is opti or what is the final value from the optimum design and you'll be able to see what's the change in your objective function also so after the results you'll see in which folder all your results are saved and at the same time for how much time your uh, optimization is run and in this movie file is where you'll be able to see a video that's what this is here 
yeah so you'll be able to see how your shape optimization is changing here yeah so this is a short video where you can see how it changed from um, initial to the shape uh, that is changed and just for the comparison how the initial design is seen so this is how is initial design and this is how is the optimized design that uh, it gave out after running the optimization and just for comparison here the torque ripple there is an improvement of 30 percent from the initial design and the optimization it ran for 58 minutes approximately for the objectives and the constraints I defined and that is for the shape optimization 